so that means now I have the chance to present uh, her uh, as she is stepping up the life. Uh, and not only in our imagination, what is interesting for our debate and our context is that she is not only related to the legal field, but also a professional architect. So she understands what she's talking about from the point of view, not only of the technical side, but also from the constructivist side. She's an historian of architecture or whatever, that means you're endowed or at least burdened with all the methodological questions that are in the historiography to be solved in a way. And your background is uh, our studies in Strasbourg and in Venice, and uh, you must also know that she also doctorate degree in architecture from the Ecole Nationale Supérieure d'Architecture, Paris Malaké, Université. Paris Est. Uh, you have taught at several architectural schools, Paris Belleville, Paris Malaké, Marseille, Lumini, and others. Moreover, uh, you worked as a translator of architectural theoretical <coughs> works. I think it's <laughs> this one, for example, Amber Prepares, as you say. And most recently, you have a post, you had a postdoctoral residency at the Laboratoire d'études de l'architecture potentielle at the University, uh, at University de Montréal. So, uh, uh, what is not in your official uh, CV, and uh, I, 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 I'm not talking about everything, of course, but what I know also that you are implied in debates in France now about architecture and the, the logic of uh, the architecture of courtrooms and courthouses. That is a, a big, a larger commission. You certainly will tell us about this. And for the, the presentation of today, you have chosen the topic contemporary courthouses, architectural images, and spatial representations of justice. So feel very, very welcomed and uh, calm down if you said it is too much. We, we give you still five minutes. I can imagine the horror to be in a train and to see there are people sitting. But we had a nice conversation. Don't be scared and go back. Thank you. Very welcome. And thank you. Thank you very much also for being here and uh, and um, it's a real pleasure to, to be in a such place where we can talk, we can meet you, and we can have space and time to, to we can write. So I apologize speaking in such poor English, and I will try to compensate for it by using a lot of illustration for my talk, hoping that the image will speak for themselves. You can look at this as if it was a movie, an experimental movie. But even if I spoke perfect English, I would have used a lot of pictures for two reasons. The first reason is that we are going to speak about architectural representation of justice, how justice can be represented today by architecture, that is, what architects have been designing and building in order to answer the judiciary and politicians' demand over the past 20 years for a new monumentality. The second reason is that architecture today is more and more a fact of image, powerful image in the context of globalization and high media exposure of architecture at, as a worldwide level. I will first talk about what has happened in France, not because I'm French, but because France stands a paradigmatic case at the European and American level. It is in France that the first courthouse model has been theorized before and during the French Revolution, and then replicated across the country through the 19th century. Now, 
It is also in France that the first break with that model took place in the 90s, 20 years ago, with important consequences on the following big, big competition in France and elsewhere in Europe. After a good short historical background, I will explore. Richard Rogers called for Zimbabwe as an architectural revolution. Then, consequences of Bordeaux's brick in new courthouse architecture. What that brick has been on both practical and symbolic plans, that is, in terms of architectural composition and in terms of symbolic representation of justice. Then, I will see the consequences, not all of that, but, and, uh, uh, yes, the consequences of that brick, what I said, and then, in conclusion, is a new paradigm of in courthouse architecture is emerging today. So, in short, we began more, less short, short historical background. At the beginning, there were no constructions. A simple branch belt was set just in a particular place, outdoors, away from the town of the village, around a tree, a stone in a high pond that is in the sacred site. While the tree or the stone refers to the magical, the symbolic universe of a primitive religiosity, the legal piece laid inside the fence as a special order in which all violence was repressed since all actions, all words, and all kind of behavior were subjected to control by the order. Then, justice became itinerant, especially the royal and seigneurial justice. It went from castle to palace, where a lit de justice, a bed of justice, was laid for the time of the trial. The first specific judicial buildings appeared in the late Middle Age, on one hand, parliaments and other royal and supreme courts, on the other <coughs> hand, the small auditoire as a civic place located in the main center of the town or the village. Parliaments and courts were magnificent, both inside and outside the building, but they didn't follow any uniform pattern of composition that characterized the building. The auditoire soon became stereotyped, but without having a particular shape. It looked like a big house and consisted in two levels with two different functions. On the first floor, a room is practically accommodated and decorated for the pre-art proceeding, while the ground floor is occupied by a few jail cell and some commercial space. It was only on the 20th century that the court on the 19th century that the courthouse became a type, using architectural vocabulary and characterization easily recognizable in the urban space. It was first theorized as the temple of justice through yearly contests organized by the French Academy of Art after the French Revolution. It was then replicated all over the country during the 19th century in a self-conscious, systematic, and long-term way that, so that it became a model which is still inhabits our collective imagination. In the, this is uh, the logo of uh, the Department of Justice in 1992. This is a neoclassical <coughs> way of composing and representing the public function of the building, as it doesn't work only for justice, but for all the most relevant public buildings of the new states. At the same time, we found everywhere in Europe temples of with columns on the front name, with the same debates of the mainstream colonial types of main facade. The Temple of State, Town House, Temples of Culture, Museum, Temples of Origin, Cathedrals, and Temples of Business. And they replicate each other. Here we 
Van Gaal's thoughtful house in Lyon, designed in 1835 uh, and completed in and completed in 1847, is copied directly from Carl Friedrich Schinkel's Artist Museum built in Berlin in 1830. But these buildings are no longer classical. They are neoclassical. That means that they still use the classical vocabulary, but in a modern sense. Art in the classical age was entirely based on the minimalists. <clears throat> that is, on the imitation of a higher and external authority, nature, the human being. All the arts are following this principle: dance, music, architecture, or poetry. The architects of the Renaissance we discovered in the architecture of ancient Greece a whole set of rules of proportions and relationships between parts and the world in the human body. They reviewed them in architectural compositions in order to unify the architectural space to make it harmonious and comprehensive. This is the age of enlightenment the age of reason, the game of mind looks at the world and transforms it. In the 19th century, this conception of art was put in crisis. <coughs> On one hand, the romantic artist proclaimed that creation has no rule to follow. On the other hand, political and economical transformations of society call for public buildings and public works more useful and less ornamental. Louis Nicolas Durand, who taught architecture at the Ecole Polytechnique from 1796 to 1834, explained that the architectural composition has to be as simple, regular, and symmetrical as possible because practicality and saving money are the main principles of architecture, especially for functional buildings designed for the public administration. In other words, the simpler the shapes, the less expensive would be the building. The Ecole Polytechnique still exists today, it has been created in Paris in 1719 to train the engineers and architects of the state. The teaching of Durand, who wrote several treaties and teaching him, had a great influence throughout the 19th century. <coughs> the classical vocabulary is normalized, especially the architectural order, and deprived of their relationships with nature and human beings. The students learn to reproduce projects and grow with scrap paper, and to follow a procedure, the march as suivre for composing any project. In France, but also in other European countries, this point of view lasted until the 70s, the 1970s, also because there were very little new judicial constructions and those were new courthouses were designed by the official architect of the state. Then, after May 78, some experiences of cities of justice were again, but they can be seen as a digression in courthouse architectural history. They tried to open the judicial building toward the city and toward society and to express how justice is a complex matter with many facets. I have no space here to talk about and explore that short experimental time of alternative ways of expressing justice. I will just show you some pictures which are, I think, sufficiently explicit. The demand of monumentality soon came back in the 90s in an, effect, an emphatic way, in the context of the big action plan 
of the French Department of Justice, a 10-year program providing for the constructions of 20 new court houses, including 10 major operations. This is what we will now will review always from the perspective of the representation of justice. The representation of justice. This French revolution in courthouse's architecture is not the fact of a French architect. It has been done by an English architect. So Charles Rogers, the famous representative of the high technology tenets, who won the first courthouse competition of that big plan of the French Department of Justice, the new Bordeaux courthouse in 1992. What Roger Rogers did and what he said. First, what he did. He did three iconoclastic operations. First, include all judicial services, offices in a bar with a recurrent surface but without specific assignment. It <coughs> makes the traditionally opaque facade of the institution totally transparent with a huge glass facade on the back side. Third, individualize the courtrooms and give extraordinary shape to each of them, highly visible from the outside through the transparency of the glass books. The court rooms are indeed, are indeed seven identical objects, as high as the wall building, simply placed next to each other along the side of the building, directly laid on concrete cripples. Those three operations can be resumarized summarize in just one, extract the more significant element from the functional program and set them at the urban scale on the backdrop of all the rest of the program entirely prevented. The lateral facet of the building offer a cross-section of this process. And what Richard Rogers said, he says that offices are very simple, on a flexible type, playing the assistant of workers in Paris. We did not ex specify where everybody is. If we are specific, we risk to fall in details. In that way, everyone can imagine that it will be there or there. Anyway, the whole organization will be changed in a few years. A rigid building would risk becoming useless. We build a lot. This experience, we know that every time we do something rigid, we fix. On the other hand, we thought that the courtrooms were really theatres. They have a very codified fighting history. There, uh, <coughs> there one can imagine fixed forms it is an argument to have a very symbolic shape. Then, in the presentation booklet of the competition, we can read. The seven courtrooms are arranged in a row similar to seven individual buildings set in a large hall, clearly visible through the large glazed facet. And Roger said also that the courtroom the office space forms a rectangular block just behind the courtrooms. The particular expression of the courtrooms and the administrative positions, the post-administrative, is an important element of the concept. The office's accommodation, the logement of bureau, is therefore a recognizable element visible from the <coughs> outside and the side of the Our design aims to make more legible the judicial system proceedings and avoids the feeling that everything takes place down the hall in a confined space.
So we have, on one hand, extraordinary courtrooms with a, a, an interior very particular and a very beautiful light. And on the other side, we have a simple offices block with a half of the half of the offices on that side. We have no lights instead of how Rogers explained also for the competition. All that part of the building, especially that one, have absolutely no natural lights. And we have to use uh, electrical lights all the day. And these two parts of the building are divided by a, a, a fort between the salle des perdus on the right and the office building on the left. So this is a picture you saw in all my architectural magazines. Richard Rogers also this picture, Richard Rogers also put it on his website. But the building doesn't work because this is a program. And a judicial program is really very complex, especially as regards relationships between jurisdictions and services, connection between the different space and area, and the flow and accessibility management, in so far as all kinds of people, mostly vulnerable people, or people in need are coming to the courthouse. Furthermore, this is another programs are full of that type of diagram. And furthermore, the offices account for more than 50% for the floor of space, which is a considerable increase compared to the 19th century court building, while courtroom represents at the most 10 or 15 persons of floor of space. That means that Richard Rogers' courtroom in Bordeaux is not working at all. Why the program seem to have been made for Christian the Frozen Park project? Of course, who was another architect involved in that competition? Of course, it less exciting. If you remember last I read it. And uh, um, I remember last summer I was in Bordeaux in a bus towards the station. And two young English or American tourists were sitting in front of me. When the bus passed in front of the court house by the little street we goes along the side facade. At that time, one girl said to the other, look at this. And the other one responded, oh, it's funny. I'm not sure that the court house have to be funny. So, consequences of Bordeaux bricks in new courthouse architecture. I will look at the general courthouse in Nantes, Richard Rogers courthouse in Anser, and Tom Lynn's courthouse in Lugien, in Oregon, USA. Whereafter, what the French have done? <coughs> The competition of Bordeaux was absolutely the first one of all the, the program of the, the ministry. First of all, they have never more invited foreign architects on a court house contest. <laughs> then they have put everything back in the box. But like Pandora's box, they failed to close it. All contributions of Rogers' device remain. The transparency of the public hall, the opacity of the courtroom, now in any case treated as objects stayed into this transparent space. The special separation between the public and private sectors and the maximum flexibility of workplace with a marked and normalized office. So, Nouvelle, Nouvelle takes Rogers' device and turns it in an horizontal sense. This is the first draw of, of Nouvelle. His assistant said me 
that he came with that dough, he put it on the table and just said, do that. So we have the basin, the technical basin, cork rooms as boxes, and the workspace as a roof that became more and more, more large. First, this is the, the section of the, the building as it was then he reintegrates the salle de papier. He asks his assistant to look at the most recently winner projects to understand how big the salle de papier could be in order to have a bigger one as possible. And he has the salle de papier of 2,000 meters square. Then he makes all offices. Then he make uh, he make all offices um, became invisible altogether in just one huge plan, being the roof of the building as a big age. When Rogers wanted to show offices, Nouvelle uh, made them invisible. And he also, this is a plan, the, the roof plan of all offices with courts, we call it Cour Anglaise, English courts, which are large, five, five pages. This is the public hall and uh, the boxes of the courthouses, which are three boxes, uh, perfectly regularly and symmetrical return. And this is inside of a courthouse. Oh, the then he did, he did a perfectly and regular and symmetrical plans, and he also drew it on a millimetrical paper, rough paper, like um, even if now it's all made with a computer, like uh, Durham called his students to do. And uh, of course, um, and, and this is uh, a symmetry which shows how, how regular is all of them. And uh, in both sides of uh, the, the first perspective of the building we saw, he put that, <coughs> he, 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 he makes copies of the dictionary of character, equity, justice, just, just, et justice. On the next competition, the competition of Milan Court Houses, three similar images are painted. That never happens before. It's very unusual to have such similarity in contemporary Either a new typology appearing. The winner of design have no architectural taste, as Françoise Jourda, the architect, explained to me, but it works. For competition, she just put all elements in functional pro of the functional program. They put, she just put them in, in place. And then, if she wins, she develops their materiality, their potentiality. It's like cooking, she explained. Here, the materiality of the court rooms, who, this is the, the room for the competition, and this is uh, the living class. So, during, between that and that, she, she completely review all the materiality of court rooms and group them in a, in a big, in two big blocks. Uh, while uh, the transparency of all the box remains with different level of transparency and that reinterpretation of the traditional party in the front. Uh, this is the, the the floor, um, on right floor of the, the, the offices, 
which are of course the top respect to the basement with core forms, and you look how different is an architectural trend. Then <coughs> the box explodes and both functional parts of the courthouse became two separate identities. First in Grenoble, in a very difficult site, a sharp triangle with a main entrance in the acute angle. On left hand, uh, on left hand, a high story office building, on right hand, the block including 13 courtrooms on two floors. The Salle de Perdu become a kind of technical gallery in between the two functional parts of the building. Of course, we see again in the, material, in the architectural speech the dialectical distribution from transparency to opacity, transparency being the materiality of corp, uh, opacity being the materiality of courtroom block, while transparency is now represented by the glass curtain wall of the office building. At last in Avignon, on a quite normal site, in front of the whole city walls, the winning project of Adrien van Silberg, the designer of La Géode in the part in the part of the in Paris, act a complex spatial separation between both public and private part of the building. In the, in the presentation text of the project, the architect explained that one more monument, that he want to, to create one more monument in the city, which is added to those already existing, ex existing at the peaks of the historic <coughs> town, who goes beyond the other side of the wall. Here is the Palais des Papes, you can see it's on the top of the, the office of the president. Another competitor who did a fully integrated courthouse with high functionality performance and a beautiful design was disparate. He told me that while he was presenting his project to the jury, a member of the jury suddenly asked him, well, but how the person who pass, who go past this building will understand that it is a courthouse, the courthouse. He concluded that Jules wanted something I got. Then I will show you, I have no thought, <laughs> so I will improvise. Uh, what Rogers so it's the chapter of the consequences of Richard Rogers' work in Bordeaux. Richard, why uh, during that time Richard Rogers was was going off with uh, his concept of uh, a cover highly expressive for the courtrooms, and he win unfair court house competitions, which is a very uh, big courthouse with 33 courtrooms, so five uh, more uh, big than the one of, uh, of Nantes, for example. And he win uh, developing his concept in a very, very uh, highly expressive way. So now the courtrooms are all in the top of the building and they create a, a sort of uh, signal at the middle <coughs> of the city and all <coughs> the offices are put on, on three layers uh, in the big layer you see first in sort of, of <coughs> fingers uh, coming from so court uh, courtrooms are, are uh, very uh, world space of, of architectural space, and the the Salle de la is with the the expression high tech, uh, especially for the next 
one, uh, I will be the one of John Main, which uh, is an architect from the group called Monsignis, and these are his first uh, some, uh, examples of uh, what he built in the, uh, in the postmodern age. And then the two far, he win in Paris, and which is now may be completed in 2017. So, uh, John Main in uh, USA. In USA, there are no competitions. The presidents of the course are, uh, are named for all the day, all their life. And uh, the Department of Justice uh, chose an architect and, and say that this will be uh, this architect will be the building. And uh, when the president of that court uh, saw so Tom Main, uh, it was uh, uh, it was very uh, worried. And uh, Tom Main said, uh, "Well, uh, come with me, and we have a trip in Europe." And I will show you uh, what is my idea. So, he, uh, well, they went in Europe, they went in France, and uh, they went to see um, La Fondation Cartier de Jean-Nouvel in Paris, the, La Chapelle de Montchamp de Le Corbusier, and the court of uh, Bordeaux, who was just completed. <coughs> And then, uh, uh, this is uh, the president of the country, which is in the, in the center of the, of the city, which is a very, very, have a very, very, very urban plan. And Tom Main did that building, uh, which is completely, completely uh, explosive. So uh, this is interior and some views. And uh, he, he designed uh, courtrooms really as if they were theaters. And they are all on the, on the, on the ground floor and uh, inside all the part of the, of the offices of the working space is, uh, is completely flexible, even if all the, the, the architecture is moving. And so um, after, after that, um, um, I would like, uh, for conclusion, to, to say that in the historical time, judicial architecture has been more and more codified and then normalized. In the 19th century, as uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I don't In the historical time, judicial architecture has been more and more codified and then normalized, especially in the 19th century, as a war architecture in the same time. And in the same time, law has also changed. Now, in our time, it seems that architecture moves towards more fantasy, emotional expression, freedom of any rules. That is, she liberated itself from normalism <coughs> of modern movement. <coughs> this new tendency called hypermodern movement is acting in the whole world, with huge effects in public architecture that is also in public, in contrast architecture. But in that very spectacular images in space can be fully expressed in museum, in stadium, concert hall, or train station. In the case of the courthouse, 
which is applied on only one part of the building, in the public part. It is because people are working on it, on that private part. On the backstage of an entirely criminalized and nominal space, a workspace, courthouses are treated as theaters where maybe individual human destiny, madness or decoration are formed wide under the light of power. Is this dialectical opposition between public and private domain also is also an image and expression of what have been called yet in 1968, the Society of Entertainment, La Société du Spectacle, by the world. Now that our private society behaviors are more and more controlled and thus trivialized, the public space becomes all stage for individual representation. Last but not least, laws are systems. I say laws because there are different laws. The Chinese law is not the Roman or German law, which is also different from the Muslim law or the common law. There are not only different rules, there are almost different families, <coughs> spirits. They have their own vocabulary, their own concepts. Maybe it is this fundamental difference that have created the explosion of Bordeaux's courthouse. It seems like a deflagration in the architectural meeting of common law and Roman law, maybe. Because law is not only a collection of law, law is an architecture. 